Welcome back, everyone. For this month, we'll be checking out Star Wars Republic Commando, released in 2005 for the original Xbox and later got a PC release. This first-person tactical shooter was developed and published by LucasArts. It reminded me a lot of SWAT 4, but more simplistic tactical commands and more action. Plus, it's in the Star Wars universe. The game takes place between Star Wars Episode 2 and Episode 3. You play as Delta Squad. No, not that one from Gears of War the OG Delta Squad, where the player controls squad leader Delta 38, voiced by Tamira Morrison, the same actor that played the clones from episodes 2 and 3 and played Boba Fett in The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett. Although he didn't voice the other squad mates, which seems strange since they are all the same clones, overall the story and characters are great, and the gameplay is still fun even to this day. As usual, we're going to go through the story, so spoiler warning, what I liked and disliked, and any funny or awkward moments that happened to me during my playthrough. Let's go set some charges. Was red, red, green, or red, green, red? And he's supposed to be the demolition expert. Like most old games, they always come with problems. You can buy this game on most online stores, but after loading it up, your mouse will jump to light speed. Just the slightest movement and it's already on the other side of your screen. Turning down the sensitivity doesn't help enough. However, I discovered in the forums that locking your FPS will slow it down. So that was an easy fix. I did, however, have at least three crashes, but the autosaves were frequent enough that I didn't lose too much progress. I did add a texture and lighting mod to improve the visual experience. Gameplay-wise, it's very linear. There is very little to explore. You might come across a few Easter eggs, like a lightsaber or speeder bike from episode six, but otherwise you're always moving forward. As a special commando, you get to carry four weapons at all times as long as you have the ammo for it. The pistol has unlimited ammo, but it is weak and I only ever used it against these droids. But you'll most likely use your melee attack since it does more damage. Your primary weapon is the Ion Pulse Blaster Rifle. It's decent against most enemies. While it sounds like a weapon in Star Wars, it doesn't feel powerful enough and almost feels like I'm firing a water gun. Next you have the Sniper Rifle, which is great for long range. Then you have the Grenade Launcher, which is effective against most enemies. You can pick up a weapon for your fifth weapon slot. This opens up to weapons like a minigun, a P90 lookalike, the crossbow laser, and rocket launcher. Overall, the devs did a good job making the combat fun. Some enemies like droids are better to use lasers on, and projectile weapons like the Trandosian shotgun is better against Trandosians. There are different enemy types to fight. You got your basic droids, who don't look exactly like the droids from the movies, which is strange. There are the Geonosians, who are generally easy to kill, but when they fly around, it's tough to hit them. You have the battle droids, which are tough enemies to fight, but I was able to run up and just knife them down. The key is to circle around to avoid its melee attack. There are some other enemies like the Droidicas or Geonosian Elites. The most annoying enemy to fight has to be this mini tank. It's a dwarf spider droid, and it takes forever to kill and rarely hits anything. You'll later fight different kinds of Trandoshans, small, medium, or large. Then there's General Grievous' bodyguards, who will chase you down and kill you fast. But if you set up your squad with snipers, they will stun them, giving you time to take them out. As for commanding your squad, there are many different ways of doing so, starting with telling them to lead the way with an offensive formation. Then there's telling them to form up on you, which lets you lead the way. Finally, you can give them an area to defend. Most of the time, they will try to find cover that's close by. Your HUD will show you if a specific piece of cover allows a squad mate to take cover and use a specific weapon. Most of the time, it will be a sniper position, but other times it might be to throw grenades, use anti-armor rounds, or to use a turret. Sometimes you might get to command your squad to hack a console or set a bomb. You can do it yourself, but you're the squad leader, so make someone else do it. Pressing F4 will recall everyone from whatever you assign them to. Your squad mates are Delta 62, aka Scorch, Delta 40, aka Fixer, and Delta 07, aka Sev. They tell you Scorch is the demo expert, Fixer is the hacker, and Sev is the weapons guy. It almost seems like they had the idea of having each squad mate specialize in something. Maybe when hacking with Fixer, he gets through it faster. 
Scorch might make bigger explosions. Sev might be more accurate? Who knows, it sounds like a great idea, but I imagine it was either complicated to do or it wasn't fun in playtesting, trying to get that specific squad mate to do the task you want them to do. If a squad mate goes down, you can either send someone to revive them or do it yourself. If you go down, then you can either tell your squad to keep fighting, revive you right now, or just reload a save. Fun fact, if you watch all the early videos of Republic Commando, you'll notice they all look the same. They were originally going to be like that, but it was George Lucas himself who suggested they have colors to differentiate them. Overall, I really like Delta Squad and really think the writers did a great job. They have lots of great conversations with each other throughout the game. Okay, let's go through the story. Surprisingly, there is no Star Wars beginning title crawl. Instead, we jump right into being born, then jump to being a child and learning how to use guns and then being an adult and getting our armor, then a quick training session with holograms, and then we meet up with our squad. And now it's off to war. You're being told that you are a special clone and were designed to become a commando. Fun fact, if you notice the numbers 01-138, which is George Lucas's first film, THX 1138, Ton Wee continues talking about your squad. You are each a piece of a whole person, and the Republic will call you to defend and give your lives if need be. Then we get Blue Text talking about the Republic unleashing the clone army. We get a pretty cool intro of getting dropped on Geonosis and watching the battle outside while trying to listen to your advisor. The squad objective remains. Find Sun Fak and eliminate him. The advisor advises you on some important things such as health stations, ammo, and grenades but also you get these text boxes with more details, which you can disable if it's your second time through. Overall, I'm impressed with what they could do to make this feel like a major battle going on. Despite the dated graphics, and there aren't actually that many NPCs around, but still, it was enough of an illusion to make me feel like I'm in the trenches of a major battle on Geonosis. Continue moving forward and you'll meet up with Scorch. Eat plasma, you stupid droids! You'll get to give him your first order, blowing something up. The charge is set and ready to detonate. It's all yours, boss. It's going to happen quite a bit, and I'm amazed just how many explosive devices these commandos carry. You advance into the next area and move forward. Take out a few enemies and have Scorch plant a charge on the door. We then watch Fixer choke a Geonosian and then one punch him to death. You then order Fixer to slice through the doors. I did notice this text box mentioned Katarn, and I wondered if that was a reference to Kyle Katarn from Jedi Outcast and Jedi Academy. Uploading and linking with your visor, sir. Fight more enemies, then the game teaches you about your two options of getting through double doors. You'll have the option to breach the door with a charge, and another will throw a grenade in. Or you can spend 10 seconds slicing the control and quietly opening the door. Most of the time you'll breach it, but later in Act 2, it's actually better if you quietly go through the doors but we're not there yet. Kill the enemies in the next room and blow up the ships. Then the next room is too dark to see, so you need to activate night vision. Next hangar has some crates blocking your path. You would think elite commandos could just jump over it, but we need to blow it up. Video game logic. Get to the next area and repel down to meet up with Sev. Oh, seven locking in the road, sir. Shoot the glass, and Sunfact will escape into the back of the room. Now we need to fight our first battle droid. First time fighting them feels like a mini boss. You can order to focus your squad's fire on the battle droid to take them down faster. Breach the next room and Sunfak is trying to escape. Have Sev take sniper position and it's obviously scripted, but Sev takes him down. Yeah! I love that smell! All I smell is burnt in ocean. Keep watching and you'll see General Grievous's ship fly by. I'm not sure if this game is canon because I didn't know General Grievous was on Geonosis. Next objective is to begin shutting down the droid factory buried deep underground. First objective is a jamming device. So follow the path and you'll find a sniper rifle. The next area opens up so you'll get to practice on a few targets. Continue on and the next area has a few eggs for baby Geonosians. They have a ranged attack but they die in one or two hits. Next room is the jamming device, so fight your way to the console and slice in to disable the shield. Once it's down, plant a charge. 
Take cover, Dalton! You rappel down further into the cave to get to the factory. Next room has Geonosian elites. Their laser beam weapon really hurts, but you just need to break line of sight. You'll need to set up a few sniper positions, then blow up some crates blocking your way to continue forward while fighting Geonosians. There is a turret you personally can man or send a squad mate to man it. Eventually you make it to the factory and take out lots of Geonosians and droids to plant more explosives to disable the factory and complete your objective. Then hurry and get picked up by a dropship. Next objective is to board a Separatist vessel to get some launch codes. It continues to be more of the same. Follow the linear path, blow up some cover with explosives, fight more enemies. There is a dropship that crashed with a turret to man, but I'm gonna be fast forwarding through a lot of repetitive combat. You make your way to the entrance and set up a sniper and grenade position to take out the droids coming from the entrance of a bunker. Once they're all destroyed, make your way inside. Not much else to say about this level except the rooms with windows you need to close by slicing into the computer, otherwise enemies will continuously spawn and fly in. After disabling the anti-air turret, you make your way outside and continue heading to the ship. Advisor says there's a dropship with a grenade launcher we can use. Yes! More explosives! You just made my day, Advisor! Fire your way through the enemy and eventually get to the dropship and use the grenade launcher. You try to walk in, but it's shielded. Damn droids! Let us through! You need to backtrack a little and blow up this wall. You need to fight a dwarf spider droid. It looks like a boss fight, but I found them to be really easy. It's like a big bullet sponge, but as long as you don't stand in the same spot, it's really easy to dodge the cannon. Just shoot the red eye in the front. Then a dropship blows open the doors, you move along in, continuing to take out lots of droids and battle droids. Your squad makes it to some vents, and now you need to separate and do things solo. Alright sir, in you go. Happy hunting. Advisor tells you to download the launch codes on the bridge, but your secondary objective is to disable the core ship. Alone against all these droids? <laughs> they don't stand a chance. He may say that, but battle droids are no joke. Taking them out alone is almost like a mini boss fight. This really teaches the player just how strong one commando is and now understands just how strong a four-man squad can be. However, on your own you still need to be careful. Eventually you slice into a console and start sabotaging the ship. I think I hit a nerve. Alright squad, secondary objectives complete. Rendezvous on sub-level 1157. Eventually you meet up with Sev who takes out a droidica. Then two more come back and they feel like a glass cannon. They will shred through you, but you can kill them pretty fast once you get through the shield. You move on and meet up with Scorch and Fixer. You can shoot this thing to drop it on enemies. Then one of them drops, but it starts deploying droids. It'll keep deploying until you plant a charge and destroy it. Then get through the door and fight some elite geos. Then begin slicing into the terminal. You can tell a boss fight is about to happen with all the sniper and anti-armor positions. As you slice the console, more elite geos show up to fight. Take them out, and once the slicing is done, another dwarf spider droid appears. Take it out, heal up your squad, and move on to the elevator. Alert! All reach imminent. Critical systems failure in five minutes. You're now on a timer. This is where things get intense. You need to keep moving forward and take out droids in your way. Throwing grenades in the right place at the right time will make things easier and is the best advice I can give. Once you get to the bridge, you or one of your squad mates needs to slice the terminal to get the codes, while everyone else takes up position and protects them. You'll have four battle droids coming from two different doors, so save the EMP grenades for them, because the EMP grenades do a lot of damage and stun the battle droids for a short time. After a minute of slicing, you'll get the codes and now make your escape. Stand back! Overall, a great first act. The beginning gets you familiar with the controls, then slowly introduces you to each member of your squad, then seeing how strong your four-man squad is, especially when they separate you for a short time. Then for the final level, normally I don't like timed missions, but here it works really well, because by now you should be used to the controls and how your weapons and squads work, so it puts you to the test for the final act. Awesome job. We get more blue text explaining a year of the Clone Wars' has passed. Delta Squad has been on many missions since then. Their next mission is finding a missing Republic assault ship that mysteriously reappeared. Advisor begins advising on how the ship disappeared and how it could be a trap. 
So that's why they're sending in Delta Squad to check it out. Someone important noted your excellence on Geonosis. You hear that, Sev? Someone thinks I'm excellent. Well, at least that makes two of you. Well, we start off by separating the squad again. You would think they should stick together, but again, each member is supposed to be like a one-man army, so it kind of makes sense to split up and search. This does make things scary when exploring and coming across a dead clone on your own, then hearing Scorch getting into trouble. You continue searching and run into a clone trooper. He opens the door for you, but some kind of flying scavenger droid attacks and kills him. In the next room, you'll get attacked by those scavenger droids. They shoot a laser and sometimes charge at you to attack your helmet. You watch two troopers attacking something and then die. So far, this is great buildup. You continue on and eventually meet up with Sev. He gets attacked by a droid, but then a Trandoshan attacks from behind. Fixer sounds like he's in trouble over the radio. Now you and 38 feel alone. Continue moving forward and you'll start fighting small Trandoshans that run at you with knives. Some might carry shotguns, which are really nice to have. Then there are mines. You need to crouch and walk up to them to disable them. Continue fighting more Trandoshans and slice into a terminal. 38 finds some interesting data to keep for the advisor. You meet up with some clone troopers, but they don't follow you or say anything. You can activate some turrets to cover your back while you slice another terminal for information. Then continue on. In the next room, you do hear Fixer on the radio again. This is a relief, but first you need to fight enemies and blow up crates that anyone could jump over, but video game logic. Continue on and we run into this lightsaber easter egg. An elegant weapon for a more civilized time. Well, guess what? Times have changed. Then we watch a large Trandoshan with a minigun take out some clone troopers. Snipers work well against them because it stuns. This one didn't drop the minigun, but later on you can pick it up and it's one of the most powerful weapons. Moving on, you meet up with Fixer, but first you need to deal with a droid dispenser. I take it out before Fixer can finish slicing through the door. Now that you have a squad mate, things get a bit easier. You fight more droids and Trantoceans together until seeing Sev getting tortured in the next room. So you need to fight your way through some turrets. 3-8, I'm reading low vitals on your squad. Wait. Was that the advisor? I thought we lost contact. Anyway, kill the Trandoshans and revive Sev. Good. Ugh, I've got more lizards to kill. Then a Trandoshan elite comes into the room. Now you can pick up the minigun. Sev says Scorch was taken to the detention block. So you make your way there and fight lots of Trandoshans. It is nice having these convenient sniper positions. Here is where you don't want to breach the door. If you do, the turrets will attack you. So it's best to slice the doors quietly. Then slice a terminal to find Scorch. He's in cell number 2187. Here it is. 2187. Now that you have your squad back together, time to head to the exit. You fight more Trandoshans and need to breach some doors to get to the bridge. It's best to slice the doors, that way you don't need to fight the turrets. You do need to blow up a droid dispenser, but the next room is finally the bridge. Take out the droids and destroy the jamming device. There's lots of battle droids to fight, but there's plenty of sniper positions to take them out. You've regained contact with the advisor. The Trandoshans have been more concerned with acquiring Wookiee pets than taking sides in this war. Then what are they doing here? And why would the Seps be selling clinkers to slavers? I'll keep analyzing the logs. In the meantime, get down to Hangar A and shut them down. As you walk to the door, Trandoshan mercenaries storm the bridge. But the funny thing about them is shooting the little tank on their back launches them into the air. Advisor says he's found lots of data on the Trandoshans. Every weapon, every maneuver. The Republic could spend months analyzing this data. So it's imperative that they get the ship back to Coruscant. As you head to the hangar, there's a battle droid dispenser. This one you need to destroy ASAP before too many battle droids get out. When you get to the elevator, the advisor says he's checked some communication logs and found the Trandoshans have arranged a rendezvous with the Separatists at this location. Unfortunately, the elevator breaks and you stop on the detention level and get ambushed. 
Fight your way to slice three terminals to turn on poisonous gas to take out the Trandoshans. Guess we know how long Trandoshans can hold their breath. Then blow a hole in the wall to move on. Clearly this is a reference to episode 4. What the? You've got to be kidding. Alright, this is getting serious. Continue on down the hallway and the only thing to mention is slicing this terminal turns the turrets to your side. You finally make it to the hangar and just need to get your squad to the turrets and take out the ship. Alright, so that should be it, right? Delta, the Separatists could be here any minute. I think it. I see it. A Trade Federation battleship. Yeah, not even you can see into hyperspace, Sev. No, it's on the edge of the system. Take a look. Back to take it. Oh, blast. This will be a challenge. As you move to the next hangar, the advisor tries calling for any Republic ship near their system. Eventually a ship does respond and is on the way. For now you get to set up in the first hangar. You can set up charges to blow up some crates. One of them allows you to man a turret. Most others are for setting up mines. Now get your squad into position and get ready to set charges as the dispensers land. Hold them off for a couple minutes and advisor will tell you to blow up the regulator to seal off this hangar. The next hangar has a droid dispenser already inside, so you need to quickly set up and quickly get to blowing up that dispenser and the regulator. You need to take out some droids on your way to the third hangar, but once you arrive, there's already a couple of dispensers in there. Now you need to carefully set up your squad into different positions. You can carefully plant a charge on each dispenser, or just slice this terminal to get a walker into the hangar and use its giant gun. That's it! Assault ship is secure! It looks like the Separatists are turning to run, but actually they begin firing on the ship. Advisor says they will need to fight back and need to get to the controls for their turbo lasers. You are once again on a timer. Why don't we just fly out of here? Engines offline. Uh, figures. You need to fight your way through the droids and get to the controls and spend a minute on three different consoles, while holding off droids coming in. I did have two squad mates working on the slicing while I sliced the third one and only had one squad mate trying to hold off the enemy. Too many droids came in and one squad mate went down while slicing. I then helped out to take out some of the droids but also got the third console sliced. Now you get to sit back and watch. Overall a great second act. It had more of a horror theme at the beginning and slowly ramped up the action for an awesome finale. No one steals a ship from the Republic while we're around. We get more blue text about the Wookiees on Kashyyyk need help. The Trandoshans invaded and are kidnapping Wookiees for slaves. They are using Separatist weapons which means they may have formed an alliance. Delta Squad is sent in to help liberate the Wookiees. Advisor says we need to rescue the Wookiee leader, Tarful. At least you have the element of surprise this time. Good luck. Of course he makes this sound like a stealth mission, but there is no stealth mechanics. Rule 23. Never pull sentry duty on an empty stomach. You get to the first camp and take out enemies, then get ambushed. But the turret really makes things easy. Once inside, you run into a trap. You need to plant a charge, then go through the opening. Next area introduces a spotlight mechanic. I guess if you run into the light, enemies will spawn and attack. I never really cared or tried to avoid the spotlight because I enjoyed the combat. Push further in and you'll run into your first Wookiee, but he jumps over the wall. Wow, Wookiees are really juicing up or drinking lots of protein shakes. When you get into the tower, you can watch the ship that comes in and the advisor will tell you it's General Grievous' ship. Blow the cover and move to the next level. Fight more enemies, follow the linear path, and rescue another Wookiee. Then blow the wall to continue on and fight an elite Trandoshan. Rescue another Wookiee and he will open a path for you guys. Okay, big Back fella. Now. Go rip some arms off. More enemies to kill and get into this room and watch your Wookiee take out some Trandoshans. Get to the window and you'll get to see General Grievous himself. This really makes me wonder, when does this game take place? Just before Episode 3 or during? Because this had to be quite some time before Episode 3 if General Grievous was here. He should be on his way to Coruscant for, you know, kidnapping the Chancellor? I know, maybe he made a quick pit stop to see how things were going on Kashyyyk. Sorry, I'm digressing. Blow the cover and move along. You see Tarful getting taken by Grievous' bodyguards. But he seems to break free and helps your squad. Grievous flies away but his bodyguards stay and feel like mini-bosses. A second one jumps in but I found them to be pretty easy to deal with. This camp is just the beginning. 
There's a lot more going on here than we knew. We now go to another camp, which has a minefield. But then they throw grenades, and then Bunzai rush through the minefield. Fatality! Now we run into some droids. Not much happens, just keep moving along, and blow this wall to get to the next level. More of the same, just keep killing bad guys and have your squad man turrets, sniper, and anti-armor positions. There is another dispenser, but it's easy to destroy. Next area is a minefield, again, that you can reprogram to blow up the droids. Now we get to a landing pad with a Trandosian ship. Just need to plant a charge and blow it up. Unfortunately, there's another landing pad further in the base, so blow up more cover, kill more Trandosians, and droids. I hope I don't make this sound boring, because it's not boring to play, but I just find myself repeating the same thing with nothing exciting or noteworthy to say. I'm beginning to feel like Act 3 was quickly added without enough time to make it unique or stand out from the other two acts. Even better than a jungle hunt. Hiding in the bush, putting a plasma bolt through a hostile's cranium, <sighs> makes me feel alive. Another BD dispenser, so blow it up reach the door, and run into a dwarf spider droid. You could fight it, or take Fixer's suggestion and slice the terminal to drop something on it. Then three droid dispensers drop in and make it look like this will be a big challenge, but a dropship comes in and blows them all up to pick up Delta Squad. Next level advisor has you needing to get to a bridge and blow it up to cut off the Separatists from the Wookiees. First kill some annoying scavenger droids and move along watching Wookiees seal off the hallways. Next area has advisors showing you in more detail what bridge you need to destroy. Next area has some sniper and anti-armor positions. Trandosians break through and all you need to do is shoot this tree branch. Watch out for the Trandosian elite, he hurts a lot. Next area is a hallway with little light and mines. Next area has lots of Trandosians to fight. I like this area because it has many tactical positions to assign your squad. Moving along, again, more enemies to fight. I'm just fast forwarding a lot of the combat because, again, nothing new or memorable happened. Okay, now we get to the bridge. There's lots of droids to fight, so clear the area. Destroy the two dispensers on the other side, and then plant the charge to blow up the bridge. Stand back, Deltas. Objective accomplished. Misfire! Misfire! Who packed that charge? You're gonna have to find another way to bring down that bridge. Oh dang, plot twist. Things didn't go according to plan. Advisor says he's going to open the door. Hold up, squad. I'm getting a read on something big headed this way. Hope it's not a spider droid. Go, go! Guess what? It's a spider droid. So hurry up and take out the spider droid, then head up to the Overlook and grab a Wookiee rocket launcher and blow up the bridge. With the bridge destroyed, now Delta needs to see what they can do about stopping the Separatists. First, Delta needs to get to the hangar. Again, this isn't boring, but just nothing specific to talk about. Next area, you need to slice the door while fighting Trandoshans coming from the vents. Advisor translates for the Wookiee and says Tarful is cut off so you need to go rescue him again. More droids, more Trandoshans, destroy them until you get to this room with Tarful. Even more fighting until you get up there and save Tarful and then take him to the exit. Next area, Advisor needs you to secure some ammo crates. Not much happens, except for some more dispensers, but that's about it. Really feels like the devs are making things up as they go. I haven't even heard any more one-liners or conversations between squad mates. Again, I'm still having fun with the shooting and giving tactical commands, just it's more of the same right now. Next area had me confused and I thought the game bugged out. The objective marker says I need to slice this terminal, which I did, but nothing changed. Since I thought this was a bug, I tried to reload, but still nothing happened. Turns out there's another terminal to the right. Then the Seppies drop a BD dispenser. Destroy it, then blow up the wall of crates. Now you need to secure the weapon crates by slicing the terminals next to them. Watch out for the BD dispenser, you'll need to blow that up. Then, surprise, Geonosians show up. Well, it's nice to be fighting them again to mix up the gameplay. Next area is a big room. There's many sniper positions for your squad to man and slowly advance. You need to get to the second floor, and now you get ambushed, and need to run to the other end to slice the terminal in order to close the windows. Of course, there's a window next to the terminal, so just take out the Trandoshan that appears and keep slicing. Next area, you need to fight General Grievous' bodyguards again. Next objective is to destroy the ship at the top of the tree. So much for a guide! Keep pushing, and the next room has a spider droid in it. 
You can destroy the silo looking things to create tactical cover for your squad. That could have been the unique thing this whole act needed, creating your own cover. The ability to destroy crates or drop dispensers to make your own cover, and maybe even pick what type, sniper, grenadier, or anti-armor. That would have made this act unique and open up so many more options to play and increase the replay value. Anyway, moving along, more droids including another spider droid because the devs thought you would love fighting these things. Advance to the hangar and take out the dispensers so the Wookiees can escape in the ship. Then blow up the tanker and move to the next area. There's four Trandoshan elites and lots of Trandoshan mercenaries to fight. Keep moving and you get to some generator room you need to activate. Send someone to slice the terminal while you and the other two fight elite geos. Once it's done, move to the next room and do it again. Lots of droids to fight, but you need to meet up with Tarful again in a hangar. Apparently General Grievous destroys this ship with his own personal ship. Now you need to fight three bodyguards at once. But you have Wookiees this time, so it's easy, especially with turrets everywhere in the hangar. More droids to kill until you get to an elevator. Clear the battle droids, then get on. Advisor gives you a quick brief on the turrets you need to man in order to destroy the ship. Get on it then, Deltas. Uh, why aren't we moving? Save the button. Oh, sorry, sir. Now here comes a tough challenge. A spider droid and two Grievous bodyguards at the same time. I think the devs needed to try and experiment with more combination of enemies like this. Now this was crazy fun. Continue on fighting more droids, but now you lose Sev, so he can man the first turret. Down a man, it makes a difference having to fight droids, geos, and grievous bodyguards at the same time. Next room has Fixer manning a turret. You and Scorch go into the next room and need to fight a spider droid. Ah, oh, here we go again. It was more annoying because it took forever to try and kill it with just you and Scorch. But they do throw some geos at you. Still, the spider droid is easy to kill. Oh wait, you thought that was it? Nope. How about another spider droid? Oh, come on! Now Scorch has to leave you, so now you're on your own to get to the final turret. This final area is really easy. They have you fight little baby geos and some adults. It's really easy, you could honestly just run past them to skip this final area and get to the turret. The ship gets destroyed, and now you call everyone to regroup when this happens. Boss, I've got a problem here! Siv, where are you? Lost a signal, boss. We'll find it again, dammit! Squad, regroup. We're going after Siv. But advisor tells them no, and needs to evac right now, because of orders from the Jedi. I don't care if they came from Master Yoda himself. As a matter of fact, they did, soldier. Now get your squad out of there. Blast our orders! Forty? He's right, boss. We gotta evac. Sir! We have to go back! So the final cutscene has what's left of Delta Squad leaving in a gunship. Scorch doesn't like it at all. Apparently Delta was the advance force for a full-scale Republic invasion. Boss! Look! It's the invasion force! Taking the city was only the beginning. I've never seen so many ships before. Yes, sir. Yes, I'll patch you through right away. Listen up, Deltas. All Republic forces. Establish forward command in Kajiro. Is that really who I think it is? Rendezvous with Delta Squad we must. Upon them, we rest much hope. Wookie freedom must not be sacrificed. Sorry, Delta. Looks like it's back to the action. You have your orders. Delta Squad, lock and load. Yep, that's unfortunately the end of the game. Quite a cliffhanger. Sad this game never got a sequel because it was a lot of fun and has a great foundation to build upon and make this even more tactical. LucasArts did plan on making a sequel, but couldn't decide on which two designs to go on. According to fandom, Imperial Commando did have several concept paintings completed in 2004. However, it's unclear if Imperial Commando was going to continue the story of Delta Squad. Rebel Commando was going to focus on what happened to Sev after he was captured on Kashyyyk and began working for the Rebel Alliance. The only explanation I could find as to why LucasArts didn't push for a sequel was Republic Commando didn't sell well. I know I'm probably overthinking this, but it still appears to me Grievous should not be here because in Episode 3 Yoda goes to Kashyyyk, and so I assume it's after this scene when they decide to send a battalion of clones to Kashyyyk. But again, Grievous should be there because if you've watched episode 3 then you know where he's supposed to be at that time. 
I know, this game came out just three months before the movie Episode 3, and even the box art shows this game was a sneak peek into Episode 3. So I'm guessing that's why Act 3 on Kashyyyk felt repetitive because the producers pushed for the devs to make it somehow tie into Episode 3. Overall, Act 3 may not have added anything new or pushed for something to make it stand out from the other two acts, but I still had fun, and the gameplay still holds up. The story here may have been quickly put together, but it is always nice to see it tie into the main Star Wars canon. In conclusion, Star Wars Republic Commando is still a fun game. The first person shooting is good enough like Call of Duty or Halo. The tactical commands makes this stand out and really makes you feel like a leader of an elite squad. I hope some development studio takes another look here because it feels like a hidden gem waiting to be polished. After beating each act, you'll unlock a behind the scenes videos of the making of Republic Commando. It's pretty cool to see a little bit of the development of this game. Next is a fun fact, all the Arabish writing you see can actually be translated. If you want to know all of it translated, go to YouTuber DJ Sanyi and watch his video. Next month will be something a little different, so I hope you'll come back and see what I have in store for you guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe to help grow my channel, and please leave a comment on what you thought. Thanks again, and may the force be with you.